Well, hey, and welcome back. This is my third video uh, for my vlog at www.everydayvampire.com. And today I wanted to go over some of the treatments I've come across in my time dealing with AIP, or acute intermittent porphyria. Um, however, before I continue, I am going to throw up a disclaimer that says I am not a medical professional of any kind. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a phlebotomist, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm nothing, I'm none of those things. <laughs> Um, what I hope to do uh, is to give you some information, some possible treatment methods that you can take to your doctor and plot out your own course of treatment. Um, please don't come back to me saying that you did something stupid just because I did it. I do lots and lots of stupid things. You don't need to do them too. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can continue on. Um, back when I was first diagnosed with AIP, it was a bizarre moment. Porphyria? What, what is that? It, it sounds like a race out of Star Trek, right? Do I, you know, do I have some markings on my head? Am I blue? No, none of those things. It's not that cool. Um, it's just a rare disorder. Well, how rare? Um, in most European countries, only one in every 75,000 people are diagnosed with AIP. Take that in comparison to something like type 2 diabetes, that's about every one in 10 people. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means, for starters, the disorder is in infinitely more difficult to find information on. Um, most medical professionals have never even come across a case in the entirety of their medical career. They might have heard about it in med school, but only in passing, unless they specialize in hematology. And, and then I'm great. Everybody loves me in hematology because I'm a freak. Um, <laughs> anyway, this makes diagnosis um, support uh, and treatment options uh, very rare to come by most people don't have any idea about what to do and I know it may come as a just a massive shock um, but most pharmacy or pharmacological f big pharma does not care about a disorder that has so few patients because there is no money in treating so few people to date there is one drug that is FDA approved to help in an acute attack and it's called panhematin it's an intravenous medication that's usually used only in a hospital setting. Um, in that instance, the rarity of the disorder may mean that the hospital doesn't even have it on hand to treat you. That's kind of how rare it is. Um, there really isn't a cure for porphyria. You may go uh, to an extreme and consider something like a liver transplant. As it develops in your liver, a new liver may help you out. Uh, personally, that was not a route I really wanted to look into. It has its own set of problems, such as rejection and well, finding a liver. Um, so what do you do? Um, as I mentioned before, it's living with porphyria is managing symptoms and avoiding going into an acute attack. When I first suspected my symptoms were caused by porphyria, I had the advantage of having a father who'd been diagnosed before me. When my mother saw my symptoms, she suggested I do something medieval. Oh dear, what's that? Well, she suggested I give blood. Okay, are we suggesting bloodletting here? Do we need a course of leeches? Well, I could actually technically kind of help, but no. Um, she suggested I just go and donate uh, blood. And you know what? It worked. It was amazing. Uh, my symptoms ebbed, um, my anxiety, was gone. My nausea was all but disappeared. Uh, I could eat. I could sleep. The nerves in my back stopped being inflamed. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, so why did it work? Well, bloodletting allows the removal of some of the excess ferrin or iron um, and the porphyrins, those heme precursors, to be removed from your blood. It allows your body to get a bit of a break. Um, it also makes your body, forces your body to make new blood cells. Well, uh, it's kind of a catch-22. Um, if you remember that porphyria begins in the heme creation, in, in the creation of blood. So you kind of go back and forth. Your, your body, you, you are inducing your body into making more blood, thus flooding your blood with more heme precursors that you don't have enough enzyme to process. Um, 
it's just a cycle. You go round and round. And I managed my porphyry symptoms this way for two years. I would develop symptoms, bleed, be okay. Develop symptoms, bleed, be okay. And it really is just not a sustainable uh, model of treatment. Um, you will eventually find yourself in a severely anemic state. At my worst, I had a hematocrit of about 18%. A normal female hematocrit is around 38% to 46%. Um, and if you've ever had anemia, you would know it's a severely dangerous place to be that low. Uh, it just became a game of managing porphyria symptoms and living with chronic anemia. And it really was, it was a, a living hell. It was just, I stopped sleeping. I could manage to eat about a piece of toast in a day. Um, I had severe leg cramps and chronic headaches. Um, direct sunlight was unbearable. Walking outside was like being burned alive, um, if that's any indicator as to why my blog is called Everyday Vampire. Um, that's it. Um, there had to be a better way. Well, the good news is that there was. The bad news is that I had to get my iron levels back up for it to be a viable option, which meant living with symptoms for quite a while and just barely on the edge of managing them. Um, so what was it? Well, it's plasmapheresis. Ah, that's a fun word. Okay. Well, what's that? Uh, well, with all things in this disorder, it has to do, you guessed it, with your blood. Um, Plasmapheresis is a procedure in which whole blood is taken from a person and separated into plasma and blood cells. The plasma is removed and replaced with something like saline or albumin um, and then the reconstituted solution of saline and blood cells is then returned to the patient. Um, so why does this work for porphyria? Why is it even an option? Well, plasmapheresis works for porphyria. Um, because you're removing the excess porphyrins, those heme precursors, and all of the free-floating ferrin, or iron, um, from your whole blood by removing the plasma that they're carried in. Um, you also sidestep the initial problem of heme creation because you're not removing red blood cells, you're not sig signaling your body to create more fresh blood. Precursors don't flood around your system and get stuck in all of the places that they shouldn't and cause problems. Um, now some red blood cells are destroyed in the process of uh, plasmapheresis, um, but nowhere near the amount you lose when you just give whole blood. So it works to an extent. In my experience, I'm in the middle of it. So it's not without its own set of problems. Um, you can't be anemic to begin with. You have to be at a point where you could give whole blood if, if something goes wrong with the process and they can't return your red blood cells to you. Um, you also have to have sufficient protein levels. Um, you have to be in good health. You will go through screening um, and many drugs and other diseases can make you an unviable donor. Um, because plasmapheresis doesn't take whole blood, it must be done with much more frequency to be an effective option. They are only taking part of it and it's not as much. Um, I try and make it in twice a week which is, well, it was nearly impossible in the beginning because my iron levels fluctuated hugely from week to week. One week I would be at 38%, the next week I would be back down to 20%. Um, hopefully you're not in that place if you're considering it as an option. So where am I now? Um, I can really only say that I'm managing now. I'm better. I'm not anemic. I have energy again, but I am still struggling with symptoms. Um, I have days where my back hurts and my liver feels like it's going to explode, but they are not the symptoms I've had before. They're not as severe and I am not also compounding them with uh, crippling anemia. Um, I believe I'm on the right path. It sh could be something you consider if you are just beginning your journey with AIP, um, but only time will tell if this is a, is a viable continued option. So far it is, and I hope it remains that way. If you have any questions, if you are thinking of some other treatment, hit me up, let me know, leave a comment below. Um, if you want to follow along with this journey and all of my other everyday issues that I'm posting about, go ahead and subscribe. Um, hopefully 
uh, I provide you with some good information and I can help. But uh, check out my blog. This is all written up. There's a few links in there. Uh, it's www.everydayvampire.com. And thanks for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye.